Chelsea got back on the horse on Wednesday with the Blues taking on Blackburn Rovers in an EFL Cup tie and winning the game 2-0 to progress to the next round. But what happened in this game and why? Let's dive in. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC, and this is my post-match tactical breakdown for Chelsea versus Blackburn. After suffering a defeat at the hands of Brentford at the weekend, this game was an opportunity for Chelsea to quickly shake that off and get back to winning ways, especially with a few players coming back from injury to give the team and its morale a boost. We expected this game to go the way it did in truth, it was pretty one-sided, but Blackburn did have their moments when they were able to. One goal in each half from the Blues sealed the deal on the score sheet, but let's take a look at how each team approached this game from a tactical standpoint. Chelsea set up in a pretty standard 4-3-3 from the outset, and apart from personnel, not much changed about our system. We had Enzo and Leslie Ugachukwu occupying the deep roles, with Gallagher playing more advanced, and as I've highlighted many times this season so far, he and Cole Palmer's fluid swapping of positions to put Cole into more central areas where he can dictate play was once again a key part of Chelsea's game plan from the outset. But like I pointed out a few games ago with Kukurea, Rhys James was also joining in on this interchange, with Gallagher sometimes finding himself in a very deep, almost pseudo right-back role, with James going further up the pitch. In general, we played our fullbacks very high up the pitch, and when we did this we'd move into a temporary three at the back system. Depending on which side we were attacking, the fullback would push high, and the centre mid on the same side would drop into one of the left or right centre back roles. This was mainly done by Enzo, dropping deeper to receive the ball and then progressing the team up the pitch from there. It should be said that Fernandez had a world class performance in this game, he racked up a 9.0 rating without a goal or assist, which is absolutely staggering. It's worth noting that this system was very fluid, players would rotate and would find themselves in a multitude of different positions depending on who was occupying what role at the time. For example, sometimes that high fullback would be one of the wingers, with the fullbacks inverting into midfield. Most of the time though, because Palmer and Sterling are left and right footed respectively, they'd naturally drift infield and allow the fullbacks to occupy that space out wide. But where do we go from there? Well, there were two attacking options we mainly utilised in this game. The first involves those fullbacks. We tried to work the ball out wide and get Kukurea, or more often than not, Reese James into positions where they could whip in crosses or get a shot off on goal. If this option wasn't available to them, they'd play the ball inwardly to Cole Palmer, Sterling, or even Enzo at times to try and find a direct ball to unlock the defence. The other option involved the aforementioned Enzo Fernandez because he did this so often, literally from the first whistle his prerogative was get my head up, find the run of Jackson with a long pass. I highlighted in my preview that lofted passes behind the lines could be an avenue to success in this game, but I mainly foresaw Palmer to be doing this because I expected Blackburn to be a bit less adventurous and sit much deeper. In actuality, they left a lot of space in behind, so Enzo was able to put the ball into those areas between defenders and the goalkeeper in order to create openings. Not only that, but he'd also aim for the wide players when able, switching the play as he so often does, and keeping the team ticking. Other players got in on the act too, players such as Sanchez were also trying to hit long passes when able to bypass the very stacked midfield that Blackburn presented. Speaking of that midfield, let's talk about how Chelsea set up defensively, because Blackburn's 4-1-4-1 changed our formation out of possession slightly. Usually we'll go back into a 4-4-2 in the defensive phase, and we did try to do this at times, but once the ball got more advanced up the pitch we'd actually fall into a 5-4-1 or a 5-3-2 of sorts. Ugachuku would drop very deep into a centre-back role, and the fullbacks would drop to form that 5. The remaining midfielders would come short in case we won the ball back, and Jackson would stay relatively high as an outlet for those midfielders to hit once we did win it back. Blackburn, like I predicted, had their moments in this first half, they had some confident spells of possession, and Chelsea did have to dig in and defend at times in this game. Our transition for the most part was another attacking tool we could lean into because quite simply Blackburn came to play like I kind of expected. It's worth noting that Blackburn very obviously didn't take this game as seriously as we did, I should say. We fielded an incredibly strong 11, and they did a lot of rotation. They left Sami Shmodic out of the starting 11, he's by far their best player at the moment. But the young kids they did play were hungry and determined to try and make a game of this to their credit. In the end, like I said in my preview, this half, and this game as a whole really, just came down to individual player quality, and that really showed for our first goal of this game. Blackburn switch off and a short corner catches them out, 
Cole Palmer excellently nutmegs his marker and slips the ball to Conor Gallagher, and Gallagher's cross is clumsily flapped out by Leopold Volstead in goal. His attempt to stop the cross falls into the path of the returning Benoit Badia-Shiel, and Big Ben strokes the ball into the back of the net for his first ever goal at Stamford Bridge, putting the goals up by one goal. Before we move on to the second half, I do want to touch on some interesting decisions by the referee. I think both teams were equally hard done by in this one, with two clear penalties not given, one for each team. The first was Chelsea's, Raheem Sterling being wiped out by the covering Blackburn midfielder inside the box. Clear contact and none of the ball was taken. This is a stonewall penalty. Up the other end of the pitch, Blackburn's claim for a penalty is slightly more contingent, but I feel like it's a penalty nonetheless. A cross from the wide right area clearly strikes Conor Gallagher's arm, and though it's in more of a natural position than, say, Saliba's was a few weeks ago, it's still away from his body and stopping the cross, so I wouldn't have been mad if this was given. Luckily, these two incidents cancel each other out. If one was given but the other was not, I think there would have been outrage, and so I think it all works out in the end, but both teams could have had one, and the scoreline could have changed. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, etc, etc. So it was 1-0 at half time and Blackburn would have to find a way to get something out of this game if they wanted to progress in the cup. Chelsea, though ahead, would want to extend this lead as we moved on to the second half. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. And extend that lead we did after a little while. The half started brightly for Blackburn, with them creating a few opportunities right at the start of the half, one for Leonard who broke away in behind but put his shot wide, and another from once again a lax piece of passing from Sanchez, which ultimately didn't cause Chelsea too much trouble. After this, the game settled back into the same pattern we saw from the first half. Lots of Chelsea possession, not much threat on the counter from Blackburn, and it seemed as if the tie was largely over. Chelsea would still want to put the game to bed though, and we continued searching for a goal. That search would soon end, as in the 59th minute, Chelsea would seize upon another mistake from the Blackburn backline. Once again, individual quality shines through here, and the gulf in class between the two sides was clearly evident. Volstead rolls the ball out to get Blackburn building out from the back, and Chelsea do what I said we needed to do in my preview, punish Blackburn for daring to try and play football against us, and not just play Route 1 and be defensive. They get too big for their boots, and the short pass out from the defence is expertly intercepted by an onrushing Cole Palmer. The ball falls to Raheem Sterling, who wraps the game up with a delicious side-footed curler into the far corner, past a scrambling keeper. That puts us 2-0 up and largely seals the game. Blackburn would still have a few opportunities to try and score, but the tie was largely decided after this moment. It's worth noting that the pressure that won us the ball in the first place was another small tweak from Pochettino in the second half. We pressed in the first half, but not as rapidly, not as organised, and not as fruitfully. However, we came out of the blocks in the second period, wanting to get the ball back quickly and put the game to bed so we could rotate players for the Spurs game on Monday. And that's exactly what we did. As soon as the celebrations were over, players that were being reintroduced, James and Badiashiel, are swiftly replaced by Malagusto and Levi Colwell, respectively, and this prompts a subtle change in formation from the Blues despite the like for like changes. Sterling shifts over to the right hand side and Palmer almost plays in a centre forward position, up top with Jackson with Gallagher playing as an auxiliary left winger. I think this shift is because of James' withdrawal, he was a good attacking outlet on that right hand side and with the more defensively minded Gusto coming on I think Pochettino wanted to maintain some of that threat for crosses slash cutbacks. And we see an example of this almost straight away as Cole Palmer sweeps a lovely weighted pass through the lines to Sterling on the right hand side who sends Harry Pickering for a bag of chips and is able to put a perfect pass into the box. Unfortunately, Jackson's confidence is in the gutter and he lofts the ball well over the bar. The second goal really gave us some confidence and we fashioned many more chances afterwards, and Sterling in particular went from zero to hero between halves. Now against a player already on a yellow card on the right, he was free to express himself and take his man on, and could have had another goal with another mazy run into the box for a chance that was ultimately snuffed out by the Blackburn defence. A few more changes would happen in the latter stages of the half, Jackson coming off for Caicedo pushed Enzo into a more attacking role with no striker left on the pitch, and eventually we saw minutes for other players such as Noni Madueke and promising youth player Alex Matos. Chelsea would see out the rest of the half pretty comfortably, but as with all games of football there's always that final chance for the losing team, and it came to Blackburn late on. Arnold Sigurdsson took advantage of a mistake from Di Sassi, and 1v1 against Sanchez, he looked sure to score, but the Spaniard brilliantly denied him to keep his fifth clean sheet in all competitions. 
And with that, the rest of stoppage time runs out, and Chelsea advance to the next round, where we will face Newcastle United in another home tie at Stamford Bridge. By then, we should have Nkunku, as well as a few others, back from injury, and the rest of the teams in the competition are all beatable, with United and Arsenal being knocked out in this round. We have a very real chance of winning this trophy now, and if we can best the tune, I think we will be one of the favourites to do so. That was the story of this game really, Chelsea can look forward to Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League on Monday in what will surely be one to watch. The match preview for that will likely be out on Sunday evening around 7pm the day before the game, if not then 8am on the Monday morning so keep an eye out for that one. And finally, before the end of the video, it's time for the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for a simple but fun one. Who do you think will be Chelsea's player of the season come the end of the season and why? But that was just my tactical breakdown for this match, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this match in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain, or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!